see I've introduced the electric guitar. So the, though we didn't use uh, a dobro in the song, the electric guitars add power mm. to the hook. I love this part. You know, this is in between, you know, sadness and ecstasy. It's just a takeoff. And it's held back. Hi, I'm Joy Borua, and you're watching Mashable Tor 4. This was a movie with uh, Sajid Ali and uh, something that his brother had helped Umtiaz. You know, they had painted uh, the whole story. They brought Leila Majnu into the whole realms of contemporary Kashmir and with the whole uh, backdrop of the culture and politics of things. Let me just wo uh, walk you through the vocal melody to start with because uh, this came first. <laughs> So, this was the melody. This does sometimes rem will remind you of like old Kashmiri things, you know. Their newer melodies haven't changed much, but this is like a little quaint. And uh, obviously, in this case, I had composed the melody first, but on some broken other lyric. This is Irshadji's lyric, you know, so. And uh, so once I had this, I added a little... So, this is important. This is what reminds you of Bihu. In Bihu, we do, the, do this with our local coals and you know, the whole, also sometimes with bamboo percussion. Tak, 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 tak. So this very peculiarly exists in the whole Kashmiri uh, diaspora. Mm. So you could say I did this and this first. This came. Then probably. This it's an understanding of chord. A little piano touch. It was changed later, obviously. And then... A bass line. This was the first song that, you know, we were supposed to compose and get through. And this was the last song in the movie. So I had to make a song which was completely very high energy. It was where beyond where these both the lovers have died and it is a song beyond love, beyond living, beyond dreams. So it had to be a song right in that space. This is where I guess, you know, it, uh, I put in something that, that defined where my central beat was. I just wanted people, since it was the last song, I needed people to groove earlier into the song. Yes, give them a sense of melody, you know. And when I composed these parts, I realized then how do I get into instrumentation? Then I went a little before. I added something like a rabab. And uh, so rabab, obviously we have softwares for which, with, with, uh, which I used in the demo. So those softwares have a very different kind of touch. So you can, especially the rabab, it's very tough to get the right inflection in the notes, you know. Finally, we got them dubbed in the studio. We used the saz and the rabab. Kaposh came and played. And uh, so, this is completely Kashmiri now. So if you play this, you know you're in Kashmir. You're not in Assam, you know. So this gives you the vibe of the land. And I just added, this was like a polka accordion. I like the sound. I thought we would later use a harmonium. But I love the accordion sound. It just gives it a universal vibe. The accordion is not an Indian instrument. But I love the vibe it is, and you know, and with the harmonium and the accordion, they are from, they have a principal family. So, this came in later, and this formed a beautiful thing, and... Uh, 
So what Sajid really liked, I did it. I didn't realize at that point. So uh, the accordion and the rabab don't follow the same melody. They're different melodies. Usually they would have clashed and they're pretty busy melodies on their own, but uh, they were working fine. This, when I sat down with my musicians to do this, they thought this might, but they, it didn't. And I think this lent a very unique sound to the sound of the song and the opening. We tried out a lot of people, but they, they couldn't do it because they didn't have that kind of freedom with the vocals when we wanted to go high. And incidentally with the whole that was kind of a very Sajid inspired thing. So wherever the song was, it went even higher. And we tried out a lot of voices, you know, but that point it was not working. And I, it's no, it's no disrespect to them because the song was done in a different way. And then I suggested Atif because, you know, uh, I figured, you know, what happens there also, uh, though they sing a lot for Bollywood, they've grown up with a lot of other music like we have. So sometimes they bring a lot to the table. Whereas in India, the staple for most people who come to Bollywood is Bollywood, not us. You know, we've grown up in the Northeast with completely different music. I came to Bollywood without even knowing Hindi. And from here, I ended kind of added a kind of a guitar a dobro, which is like a slide guitar thing. So you will see the exact point is on the hook. So this was an indication. I I just loved the sound of this. You know, this is not a Kashmiri thing, but you know, it helps form the universe of sound of the song, that this is somewhere we could go to. You might not use a dobro later on, you might use a guitar, you might use a different Indian sounding thing. But uh, I guess that's where Bollywood is amazing because every song is a fusion song. You can really do much. I think this is where Bollywood really scores. You have an Asmi's kind of a beat, you have a Kashmiri story, you have a dobro which is like a very non-Indian and American kind of a country instrument, you have an electronic kick, you have uh, the acoustic uh, 12 string has also come in here. So this is uh, this is what I really love about Bollywood. In one song, you can really crack the fusion open. There was no challenge as such, it was punk. But you know, later on, because it was a very energetic song, composed at a very different scale, if we realized we needed to have a female voice. So that was a afterthought. We realized that we'd gone so high on the song, we forgot that, you know, you know, uh, Majnu has Leila with him at the end and she deserves a voice at the end. So that was the challenge at the end. And uh, that it took a little time to find the right uh, vocals for the female slot. With Jyotika Tangri, she came and she did it effortlessly. I was quite amazed and I didn't know about her. You know, I was also lost in my own thing. And Sajid mentioned that, you know, why don't you? And she's done a fair bit of work with Z, I guess at the time. They sent and she cracked it the first time, but uh, that was a challenge. So this is this 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 was sung very well for some reason. You know, I think because it was Z music, I don't know this, uh, but uh, so uh, they also got in Jyotika. But this is a very dear friend of mine, Nirupama, who sang it. Great voice and she also cracked it. You know, I've forgotten it till now, she cracked it. But in the end, I think they just wanted a little more power or something, you know, or you know, this is what happens sometimes. And uh, so this was done at the last moment. And then I come in with my refrain and the counterpoint. I love this part. You know, this is in between, you know, sadness and ecstasy. It's just a takeoff and it's held back. It begs to be free. It's not free, but uh, I, it's just that midway space and it just sets up that thing. I, even if somebody else, even if this was a female part, you know, 
I would have loved this part. I just love that, you know. I had no idea of Kashmiri music and I am not per se like a folk musician. My kind of music which they really loved was uh, rock. But somehow they felt that I would be doing justice to this. And uh, I think this was an ode to the beauty of Kashmir and to the friendship that, you know, I have with Sajid and the faith that Imtiaz places in us. Oh, <laughs>